Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. One of the most important things to have during a power outage or a blackout is some sort of backup power source. And for years, people have relied on traditional gas generators. I, for example, got this Champion Dual Fuel 3800 shortly after the 2021 Texas ice storm. I wanted something that could run my refrigerator, my box freezer, and a few other smaller devices all at the same time. And also liked that it was more fuel efficient than some of the larger things out there. I didn't have a transfer switch, didn't have the money to install one at the time. So it didn't really make sense to have a 10 or 12,000 watt generator because it would just use more fuel and I would waste its capabilities. So at the time, I really felt like it was a good compromise between being able to do what I needed it to do and being somewhat reasonable from a cost perspective. But since then, I've had the opportunity to test out several solar power options, and they really have caught up with generators like this in terms of what they can power and how long they can last. So today we're going to be taking a look at how the EcoFlow Delta II Max stacks up against my personal dual fuel generator. And I'd like to thank EcoFlow for sending us the Delta II Max, an extra battery, and some panels for us to take a look at today and for sponsoring this video. When it comes to capability, the Delta II Max should be able to run pretty much anything that my champion can run. The Delta II Max can handle AC output up to 2400 running watts and 4800 surge watts. The champion, on the other hand, can handle 3800 running watts and 4700. 750 surge watts, but that extra power hasn't really made all that much of a difference, at least with how I use mine. 2400 running watts is plenty of power to run both my fridge and my box freezer at the same time, and it's also enough to run other kitchen appliances like crock pots and electric griddles. The Delta II Max also has a feature called X-Boost, which allows it to run some appliances that would normally require up to 3400 watts. And that's useful for tools or other appliances that either generate heat or have spinning motors. The runtime that you get with a solar option like the Delta II Max will depend on its capacity and what you're trying to run. Just by itself, the main unit holds a little bit over two kilowatt hours of energy, but that is expandable. You can add up to two Delta II Max extra batteries, each of which also has a capacity of just over two kilowatt hours as well, which means that you have the opportunity to triple its overall capacity. And to connect the Delta II Max to an extra battery, start by making sure that everything's turned off, then take the cord out of the storage area on top of the extra battery and plug it into the side of both devices, then turn on the main unit and you're good to go. My setup consists of the Delta II Max and one extra battery battery and that should be enough to run my box freezer for over three days. But one disadvantage to solar power options is that you can deplete the batteries pretty quickly if you're running a high wattage device or especially multiple high wattage devices at the same time. But to overcome that, they can provide pass-through power while you have them hooked up to solar panels or something like EcoFlow Smart Generator. Now with that, you're just going to have to figure out how to configure everything so your panels are getting enough sunlight and this is able to send the energy to the appliances you need it to but with propane or gas, you can just add more fuel. But once you run out of fuel and can't get any more, then a traditional gas or propane generator really isn't gonna do you any good. During normal times, that isn't too much of a problem since you can just fill up your gas can or go pick up a new propane tank when needed. But during a long-term situation, having enough fuel on hand would be a big challenge. Aside from the cost of fuel, gas cans and propane tanks themselves are pretty expensive. When it comes to gasoline, you're gonna need to actively rotate through that stockpile, even even if you're using things like ethanol free gas or gas with fuel stabilizer in it. However, solar options like the Delta II Max can be powered in a variety of ways. For long term use or even when you're camping, it can support up to 1000 watts of solar input. And to do this, it has two separate 500 watt ports, which can also allow you to use panels of different sizes if needed. In this setup, I have one of EcoFlow's new 220 watt bifacial panels plugged into one input and an older 160 watt panel plugged into input two. Now, normally you wouldn't want to connect like a 220 watt panel and a 160 watt panel in series, but it's okay in this case because technically you're using two separate inputs. And connecting panels to the Delta II Max follows the same process as connecting them to other EcoFlow power stations. Start by setting up your panels, then connect the solar charging cable to the cables on the panels, then plug the other end into the Delta II Max and you're good to go. If you're traveling, you can plug the Delta II Max into the 12 volt port in your car and charge it up that way. 
Then of course you can also charge it using AC power from a wall outlet or generator. The Delta II Max can handle up to 1800 watts of AC input, so I think that means you should be able to recharge it from 0 to 100% in maybe like an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, something like that. But that time will go up if you're charging this and an additional battery at the same time. And this is one area where gas and solar generators work very well together. Like what I plan to do is use solar as my primary power source, but if there's a situation where we have a lot of cloud cover, then I can use the gas generator to charge these up. Then I can kind of save my fuel that way. And EcoFlow has a smart generator that's been designed specifically to do this. However, if you need to, you can use just regular generators for this as well. Another big advantage that solar power options like the Delta II Max have over traditional gas generators is that they can be used indoors. And that's very beneficial if you or a loved one uses something like a CPAP machine. All you need to do is set the power station next to your bed and then plug in your device. I also like to use these around the house if Say I'm doing something and I need power, but I don't want to mess with an extension cord, then I'll just plug whatever I need to into one of these. Fuel-based generators, on the other hand, can produce carbon monoxide and a bunch of other harmful fumes. So really, they should be located at least 25 feet away from your home, and that means you're either going to need to use things like extension cords or a transfer switch. And that also makes them more vulnerable to theft since they're usually left unattended and can draw a lot of attention because of the noise that they make. So if I experienced a power outage and I needed to leave the house for a little while, I would much rather plug my refrigerator into this so that I could keep my home secure and my food fresh. And if it's just powering my fridge, this should be able to do that for around 20 hours based off of my testing. But if I wanted it to power my fridge and my box freezer at the same time, it could do that for around 19 hours. So this really is a practical power solution for both short-term and long-term situations. If you think you want to pick up a Delta II Max, then use the links in the description below and the code EFDIYPREP5. And this will get you an extra 5% off the Delta II Max just by itself and the solar generator bundles. And that code is good through June 25th. Or if you order before June 4th, you can choose to get two free 110 watt panels when you buy the Delta II Max by itself. And you can use this code to get that deal, but it's only good with the Delta II Max, not the solar generator bundles. Another thing having a silent power source is good for is that it's nice when you're working in an off-grid location. My dad and I have built deer stands on site, and in the past we've used gas generators to keep things like our saws and our air compressors running. And while a gas generator did everything that we needed it to, it was a constant source of noise. But last year I used the original Delta Max to build a container garden stand. And aside from the actual tools, there was no additional noise, which made it a lot easier for us to communicate with one another, and it was also just nicer. The original Delta Max and the Delta II Max can run any any power tool that I have, including this old circular saw, large stationary tools like my table saw and miter saw, as well as other tools like air compressors. And being so quiet also makes it a better choice if you need a power supply while you're camping since it won't disturb those around you. Another big advantage that the Delta II Max is going to have over traditional gas generators is that you're going to have less maintenance on them and they're also going to be more reliable. You can take this Delta II Max, stick it in a closet for months, and then pull it out when you need it because it has low self-discharge batteries and it really doesn't require any maintenance. Gas generators, on the other hand, are a completely different story. Gas generators should be taken out and started at least once per month. You also need to do other things like change out the oil and spark plugs and be careful to not let gas sit too long in them. Most gas has ethanol in it and can go bad in as little as six months, so you need to really be intentional with how you store and use your gasoline. And that need for maintenance also makes those generators less reliable. Since there's so many moving parts, there's a lot that can go wrong with them. An example of that would be my gas generator has an electric start feature that uses a lead acid battery. These discharge very quickly when they're not in use, so I keep mine on a maintainer whenever I'm not using it, but that doesn't always work. I actually had to jump start mine because that battery's gone dead. And a very big problem with this one is that you can't pull start it using gasoline as its fuel if the battery dies or you don't have one connected. There's a solenoid that defaults to using propane and it needs electricity to switch over. It's also stuck in the past and I had to tap its housing with a hammer to free it up so I could run that generator on gas. 
The Delta II Max is just one of several solar power options that I've tested in the past, and all I've ever needed to do with any of them is just turn them on. They just work. Also, since the Delta II Max uses LFP or lithium iron phosphate batteries, that means that they can go 3,000 cycles before reaching 80% of their original capacity, and that's basically a decade's worth of use. Gas generators are going to get finicky and start to have problems long before 10 years are up. The Delta II Max is easier to use in other ways as well. With a gas generator, a lot of the time you're going to need to roll those into position, and if you have a smaller person in your family or somebody who's not in the best health, it's probably not going to be all that easy or even doable for them. You also need to do other things like add fuel, check oil levels, use the choke to get it started, and in the case of mine, I have to attach that electric start battery. The Delta II Max is also more portable. Although it's heavy at 50 pounds, having a smaller footprint allows you to place it in your floorboard or trunk. This isn't something that you can do with the traditional gas generator a lot of the times because they tend to have a larger footprint and mine in particular I believe weighs around 125 pounds so most folks are going to need help getting that in say like the back of your truck or the back of an SUV. Although to be fair there are some smaller inverter generators out there. Another good thing though about the Delta II Max is that if you want to you can control it using the EcoFlow app. While you can use the device without it it will allow you to do things like monitor power levels or turn outputs on and off remote and you can do other things like adjust the AC charging speed and that's nice if you're trying to recharge this using a generator while using that generator to power up other things and also lower charging speeds are also a little bit easier on the batteries and you can also use the app to adjust other settings like timeouts and X boost now a while back I did a video showing my family's energy plan and you can check that out by clicking here or if you want to see some portable off-grid cooking methods then check out this video. Once again, I'd like to thank EcoFlow for sending us the Delta II Max, an extra battery, and some panels to take a look at today, and for sponsoring this video. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.